You know, in um, in the early days, yeah. you didn't in the in the churches. I was in the West Indian Pentecostal churches, and in those days, they didn't say, "Well, Brother McKibbit, next next week you're going to be preaching." Yeah. They would just stand up and say, "Well, we now come to the we now come to the preaching of the Word of God," and they would just name somebody, and you had to come forward and you had to speak. Yeah. So I learned to speak up. And one of the reasons why I speak so loudly when I am preaching is because <laughs> I had to know? learn to preach louder than people could say Amen. Because in the West Indian churches they were Amen, Amen, Hallelujah, Amen, Hallelujah. And I had to learn to preach louder than they could say Amen. I mean, we didn't have things like amplification in those days. We do now, David. We do now. <laughs> yes, we've got, we've got, and, and this church has two. <laughs> But the thing is about it, someone says I don't need a mic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so where exactly did you go from? When exactly did you start preaching? For I mean, I know that you were saying you you were called on the spot and so on, but there must have been a transition where you you know you decided I'm a pastor now. Or right. What I, what happened was I knew that I had the ability to preach, and as I said, it was in this church. In this church, we got an invitation to, to go and watch a film called Athens of India by. T.L. Osborne, and it was being run by an organisation that you might know about called World Vision for Christ. <laughs> uh, I've heard of them. No, I dare say you have. And um, later on, I knew that I called to preach, and God, you know, when God calls you, He leads you to the right to the right men. Mm. And one of the one of the, the men that has been a great influence in my life, mm. and a great influence in my ministry is your grandfather, Dr. Albert Chambers, the founder of, the founder of World Vision for Christ. We met him and uh, I spoke to him and he kind of encouraged me a lot. And we went along there and I heard him preach, but we saw outstanding results. We saw blind eyes opening. We saw people with cancer being healed. Mm. I went to Bible college in those days mm. for a little while and afterwards, I went on ten duty in some of the in some of the, the big marquees that Albert was, yeah. Dr. Albert Chang was holding uh, over yeah. London, and that kind of influenced me because not only then I knew that I was pre I knew that God had called me to preach, mm. but God had lent uh, God had sent me to a man that was preaching the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. He wasn't compromising the word of God. Yeah. He wasn't one of these exhibitionist uh. preachers. He wasn't one of these people that, um, you know, That's all about me and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I thank God, I thank God for that. Yeah. And then later on, I, one of the things that concerned me was my arm. Mm. I, said, I said to Dr. Albert Shea, because that was in Wood Green, when he was doing a tent crusade in Wood Green, mm. I, I sat on the pulpit um, after the meeting and I said to him, I want to go out in the ministry. But how can I preach healing like you're preaching healing and preach miracles like you're preaching miracles when I've got my arm the way it is? Mm. And Dr. Albert Chambers said, did the Apostle Paul preach about the resurrection? So I said, oh, what's that got to do with it? And I, <laughs> but you know how Mother Chambers kind of leads things on. I said, well, yes, he did. He said, had he been resurrected? And he hit me. Mm. and I got the revelation then it's not what I am that gets the job done it's who he is we yeah. don't preach what we are we preach what the Bible yeah. and, uh, so, and somebody once said to me on, when I was preaching once they said to me how 
how can you heal the sick with your bad arm? And I looked at them, because that time I gained a lot of confidence. And I said, let me tell you something. I can't even heal him with my good arm. Yeah. I'm not the healer. He is. And someone said to him, well, do you think you should be laying hands upon the sick when you've got a bad arm? And I looked at him and I said to him, do you think you should when you've got false teeth? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's truth in that. Yeah. And then I started to... I, I didn't go around begging. I've never asked if I can preach in anybody's church. Mm. I've never done that. I've never begged. We, I went out, we hired halls, and we organised meetings. Mm. And that's how we... And that's, and that's what we did, really. And then later on in life, I, I became a pastor of a church in Nottingham, yeah. pastor of another church in, in High Wycombe. Yeah. And then, again... God laid it upon the heart of Dr. Albert Chambers to go into radio ministry and they bought a radio station and we are able to go out on the radio every week on Radio Star Country and that's been a blessing. We have got letters from people that have been blessed by the radio broadcast. We get people writing to us asking for CDs. And yeah, and the amount of people you're reaching, you know, you don't even know, you don't know where you know, they could be sitting in their living room in Africa even, yeah. and just you know, is that um, you know, you, you went from a long time ago in your life, you had the, the bigotry and the racism etc, and now God has changed you so much that you're, you know, you've preached in Africa, um, you've preached in the West Indies and everything like that you're a completely different person and mm. also another thing is you know, you were timid shy you then you went on to you know smoking sixty cigarettes a day. You were drinking, going to the parties and everything, and nothing else could have changed your life like God has. Because as you said, you try and stop smoking, you try and stop drinking, but there's a moment that you can put every, you know you can place in your mind, and you know that was the moment that God came into your heart and changed you. And what I would ask now is, what do you see happening now? Because you're still with us. You well, still. I thank, well, I thank God for many things that have happened in my life and last week I celebrated my 30th wedding anniversary yes. and I, in 1979 I got married to a wonderful woman. But you and didn't need drink at all? I didn't need drink, no, I didn't need drink. <laughs> it was, uh, we, we actually, we met on the, we met on the underground, I was on, we met on a train <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> No, I was. It wasn't, and it wasn't the lost property office. <laughs> we <laughs> we met on the train and we started talking and seeing each other. And in fact, I even baptised, uh, even baptised Sheila myself. Wow. And uh, later on, I think I baptised her in Lewisham. And later on, we um, we got married. Yeah. And uh, God has kept us together for thirty years, and thank I thank God for that. And God's been really good. And I don't regret one moment of it. Yeah. You know, I've, and as I said today, we are. I um, produce a magazine that we try to go out each month. Mm. We can't always do it, but we do. Mm. We're involved in radio ministry. We're involved in crusade, crusade outreach. And as you mm. said, we've been. I've taught in. A, I've been to Nigeria. I've been all over the West Indies. We've been to Northern Northern Ireland. Mm. I've recently just. I re, only a few months ago, I was in there. Um, I was in Dublin, we, we um, taught in a Bible college in Germany, yeah. and um, I've been invited um, to other places like um, Uganda and different things, so God is opening up, God is opening up doors, and uh, yeah. where are we going from there? Well, one of the things is we want to continue what we are doing, but do more. Yeah, and it's, as with people, you know, if somebody won the lottery, etc., they want to let everybody know, because they mm -hmm. see it as a good thing, I mean, unless they feel they're going to be asked for